the Lullbirds. That's our word brought to you by the High Incident Project. <laughs> Have you heard about this yet? <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, and I'm here with David from ZGY, and of course, I'm Jim Jesus. Um, but before we get into the High Incident Project, we got a couple of things to talk about. First of all, we got some announcements, uh, just a couple of quick announcements, but it's all Patreon related. Uh, I don't know if I talked about this uh, earlier, but I'm doing stuff every single day. Every single day on Patreon. That's going to be my goal for the next year is just produce something every single day uh, for Patreon. It's going to get really interesting next week when I'm uh, on vacation <laughs> and I still have to record these things. Um, but there was a couple things that happened. I went and saw the, the My Little Pony <laughs> movie and I probably, and you've heard, I, 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 I can tell you've heard this already. <laughs> <laughs> and I, did I saw a, a little bit of it, yeah. A very in-depth review, a very angry <laughs> in-depth review about how, how much I hated this movie. I'm not a brony. Um, I don't necessarily, well, I, I guess I, I really yeah. don't like My Little Pony, um, but I get why it's appealing. And I, I kind of, I talk about it, uh, but it's really funny. And I, a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people <laughs> someone <laughs> said like, just the fact that a, a full grown man is, is in his car screaming about <laughs> Twilight Sparkle made my day. <laughs> oh man! Yeah. Ch- what about Charity? Or, uh, yeah. A Can't rarity. Their names. Rarity. Rarity. That's what I was. Thinking. Charity is a stripper. <laughs> total stripper name. It's a total stripper name. No, you know my daughters used to watch the uh, show on TV or Netflix or whatever, and it, so I would hear it when it was on, and it actually wasn't like, like the stories were actually okay. You know what I yeah. mean? Like. But to, I I don't know if the movie has this, it doesn't sound like it has no. the same uh, carryover. So <laughs> not at all. I mean the characters are there, like everything is there. It's just right. it, it's not it's, the same quality. Oh my, the an like the animation like they put a lot. I I talk about it deeper, but they put a lot of effort right. into the animation. And I think it actually made it look worse. Um, in some respects, nice. better in some. Um, but yeah, but I oh. like there's an episode of my little pony where they kind of go into the philosophy of Ayn Rand. And it's, it's not like it, we're going to talk about Ayn Rand. If it's like, they go to this, this place and it's completely collectivized. And I guess they have like these marks on their butt called cutie marks. And uh-huh. none of them have it because they thought they think that it's, it's, you know, it's too individualistic and we all have to work together as a collective. And they quite quickly realize like, oh, Jesus. oh shit, this is like a Stalinist regime, but they don't say it. <laughs> you know, this is just bad. <laughs> Um, it's just implied, but it, yeah, like there's that, and there was also an episode like, um, or it's a it's a kind of a take on the Tribbles, you know, the trouble with Tribbles, the, the Star Trek episode, Star Trek, mm-hmm. yeah, but they kind of put their own little spin on it, and it's it, you know like they can do creative stories. I mean, I've seen it, right? It's not f- the show for me, I because I, I in fact I there actually is a hatred for My Little Pony, but it doesn't have anything to do with the contra- uh, content of the show. It's the fact that this show distracted the demographic that would have been its uh, primary oh, viewership yeah. Thundercats for Thundercats. <laughs> Thundercats was an amazing show and it was supposed to be two seasons and it was a big story arc. So like two, basically two kind of story arcs, one overall story arc and then one for the first season. So you got the, you got mm-hmm. that story arc, but you don't know what happened after that. And it's like, fuck. And they said they're not going to do it because it got canceled because no one watched it. Everybody's watching fucking ponies. <laughs> so, go. Yeah. So I'm mad about that. Um, yeah. So anyways, we should talk about the system. Now, you di- you said you didn't yes. watch the system yet, did you? Uh, I actually caught part of it okay. um, while I was in the dentist office waiting. Um, always have plenty of time mm-hmm. you know, sitting there. So I got part of it, man. It was pretty interesting. Uh, I think I'd like to get Steve Miller Miller's take on it since it's largely about gambling or uh, at least the part I yeah. saw about the horse racing. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm like, he's, the, he's probably the guy you want to talk to about odds and shit. But no, dude, it, it was pretty pretty damn interesting what I saw. Yeah, um, it's it's going to get very interesting <laughs> just a bit because uh, we're going to kind of talk about the entire thing. If you haven't watched it, by all means, stop this episode because we're going to spoil the hell out of it. Uh, but we're going to kind of guide you through the entire story as well. So if you haven't seen it and you don't want to bother watching it, there's this, uh, but um, it's very important about <laughs> like something else. Notes. I want to, yeah, but I want to talk about later on and how it ties into stuff that we're seeing today. Okay, so Darren Brown. Are you, are you familiar with Darren Brown at all? He's the uh, magician that took part in this. He's, he's more of a mentalist. The first time <clears> I've uh, I've come across him. Interesting guy. You know. Yeah. Oh um, yeah. No, I'm not not too familiar with him. 
Yeah, he, he's had a few TV shows on the BBC. He's a British uh, mentalist. Uh, he's really good. He's been tied into a lot of controversies. There was one about the, the lottery uh, where he predicted the uh, the lottery. <clears throat> it turned out to be complete bogus, but uh, there's been some controversy with them. Like he's done a lot of kind of trickery in the past, but this one, this one's pretty straightforward, except for one particular trick. They don't ex- explain how he does it, but he explains everything else. So the system is, uh, uh, I guess it's um, a special that he did for the BBC. I don't know what channel it is. I'm not too familiar with the BBC channels. Um, but the premise is, is that he devised a system and it's called the system where you can accurately predict what horse is going to win. And it's, it has a 100% guaranteed success rate that, you know, like it will predict a winner every single time, every single time, 100%. Mm-hmm. And this is like uncommon, <laughs> like nobody accurately predicts horse races. You can know everything about the horse races. Like there's people... And I, I think Miller Miller even talked about it on the show where people where people are uh, or no, I think it was just when I met him in real life. <laughs> but, you know, there's people who have like these books and they bring these books to 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 the bookies. And you can see them all over Vegas and any of the casinos from all the way from, you know, the ones on the strip all the way down to, you know, the, the, the ones that are f- for locals. And they have like these books and they, and they keep track of all the statistics on them and, you know, what they should vote for. And, you know, they, they catalog every single race and they run it through data machines. Like these guys are professional people and not even they could accurately predict it, you know, to the 90 percentile, let alone 100 percent. Like, um, yeah, the, all the time. And at the end of the day, bookies always win, you know, <laughs> like there was a scene in it where they were like where he they were talking to one of the bookies and the bookies was like. Oh, like it does. Like we got a thing of cigars here because we know at the end of the day we're going to take your money <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we're going yeah, like, to we're going to be profiting. We got today. nice cigars because you know we're taking your money. We're going to we win no matter yeah, what. I, I, yeah, I think that's about the part where I jumped off on that guy was hilarious. That guy was funny. Yeah. <laughs> so, but he's devised this system, and you're basically kind of following this woman named Kadisha, who has been a part of the system who was contacted by Darren anonymously. She doesn't know who's who's in charge of it or whatever. All she knows is that she got this email that says, Hey, we've devised this system in order to, to guarantee results to, uh, to accurately predict horse races. Don't put any money on this. We just want you to, to watch. And if you're convinced by this, you know, just, you know, keep in contact with us and we'll, we'll be in touch. And so they, they put her, they, they, they told, you know, told her Boz is going to win this race, this next race, watch it. And, you know, just contact us when, when you, when do you think you believe in it? So she did. Um, and she's, she's, they kind of go into her whole history and she's got like a lot of debt and whatever. And she's, she she's like a single mom. Yeah. Single two mother. jobs. Yeah. She, you know, she busts her ass just to, to, to make ends meet. And, you know, she's never had any extra money. She's never really gambled. She doesn't have a history of gambling. Um, and <clears throat> so she, she, she's like, okay, I'm interested and watched it. And she was like, oh my goodness, they're like, they won. And then they got into contact with her again and they said, Hey, uh, if you want to put a bet on this, put a very small bet on it. Cause we're still in the you know, process of working on it. And we're, you know, we're not sure if we got all the glitches out, but it's, it's pretty, it's pretty spot on, but you know, put a very small bet on this horse and they, uh, and she did and she, she won and they gave her a video camera. And she was kind of like, so you're kind of, she's, she's, they show her at the bookies again, making another bet. And the whole time, like they're, they're, they're kind of, you know, teasing, like, what is this system about? We're going to tell you how to do it at the very end, but you know, just stay tuned. Um, so that's, they got to hook you first, man. Yeah. They got to they rope you in first. It's a two man con. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I don't know about two. No, I'm just, you yeah. know. <laughs> we'll get, but no, yeah, it, 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 it had me hooked, man. It's it's really interesting. So I didn't I didn't make it all that far, but um, I guess yeah, better. It was a better email than the Nigerian prince one. So <laughs> you know, do you kind of have an idea of how it works? I mean, don't say it just yet. I don't want to spoil it. Just uh, I got we're to gonna the, spoil it, but not yet. I got to the part where they took four people who were involved in the um, in either breeding or horse racing or or oh, the okay. um, booking side of it or whatever, and they. We're uh, basically running a, an experiment, experiment with them, and that's about as far as I got. So, okay, um, I don't know if that's like a jump off point for you or not. Well, let's 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 get into the other things. So, there's two other things that happened, and that's one of them. 
The other thing is, is that he shows like, this is going to give you an idea of how this system works. And what he does, he says, I'm going to flip a coin 10 times and 10 times right. I'm going to hit heads and I'm going to, I'm going to show you. And he's, he's flipping the coin and you know, he flips it 10 times and it's a, it's a continuous shot. Like there's no camera trickery at all. It's like they show him flipping the coin on one half of the screen and on the other half, you see the, the coin entering. Yeah. The like the camera looking down on the, on the, uh, right. On the bowl and the coin. <clears throat> and he's flipping the coin and, he, you know, he gets 10. He's like, you know, that's that's it. Thank you. Uh, do you have any idea how that's – don't exactly say if you do, but do you have any ideas on how that's happening? <laughs> well, my first thought was it's a trick coin, mm -hmm. you know. But it wasn't. I mean, yeah, the, I'll, I'll spoil Right, that so I, that was just my uh, – <laughs> and I, you know, I, I, was wa I was watching it and I didn't watch it very closely because I was, you know, at the office or whatever. But So I was kind of wondering how he – it bounced around a certain way. I, I don't know if it was, you know, he was trying to make it bounce a certain way or control the variables that way. But yeah, no, I, I couldn't tell you if it wasn't a fake coin or a trick coin. I, I, I'm not positive how he, how he did it. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they tell you how they do it at the end and I'm going to tell you how he does it at the end too. Um, Sweet. Yeah, this is going to – don't worry. We're, we're going gonna to get into a banter a little bit later. I just want to kind of <laughs> go through this and kind of explain how this all works and how it's going to tie into something a little bit later. Um, so he's flipping the coin. And then there's another one. They don't explain how this trick works, but he had like this room and there was like almost 8,000 pictures of people um, in the room with their names on it and had a number on the front and then a number on the back. And he brought those four people. There was like you know a couple people from tr racetrack owners, breeders, and then like some journalists who are involved in you know the race racing kind of thing, right? So he brings them in, and he's saying like you know like here, randomize these these envelopes. Um, you know like I'm going to give them to you. However, you're standing in front of me, these numbers, and put them on your on your on your shirts. Go pick out you know some of these pictures and come back and you know, stand on these four dots and it doesn't matter which ones just choose one. And right. he, he accurately predicted like, uh, not only who they were going to pick, but their, their initials matched this, the, 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 the people that were on, <laughs> on the, the picture had a name. They had, you know, the same initials as all the people that were there. Uh, he accurately predicted what order they were going to stand in, what envelopes they were going to take. The envelopes themselves had the, the, the predictions of what pictures of the person they were going to take, what numbers were on the front, and, and like wow. the numbers on the back accurately predicted the odds that he would be able to predict everything that just happened right now if you flip the cards over and read it in order of where they were standing. And it was like something to the tune of like set one in 17 billion or something like that. And they were just like, we don't know how we did it. <laughs> like, what the hell? No, it's yeah, it's crazy. Cause even they were saying the, um, the chances of him getting it right 90% or a hundred percent was like one point in 1.48 billion yeah. just on the horse races. So for him to be able to do that with those people, that's, yeah. that's nuts. And it, they were, it was an astronomical number. It was like, and even the guy was talking about like, I was trying to like do the calculations in my head about <laughs> what are the odds of this being able to work quadrillion. And he was like, once I got into like the, the billions, I just, I lost track. I just, <laughs> it just, it just became too big. Um, they don't explain how that, how that, how that worked. And it's kind of sad. Um, but I think there was actually some proper like magician mentalism stuff happening there. So mm -hmm. I probably just don't want to reveal that stuff because it's probably going to reveal a bunch of other stuff that he does. Um, but the coin one, they do actually do tell you how they do. So, um, you know, that keeps going. Know. Um, she, she ends up like putting bigger and bigger bets down as she's going along. And there was, it ended up being like six, you know, six races. And at the very end, they were like, um, he sits down with her and he goes, okay, so we've made it this far. Uh, there's one more race. He's mm -hmm. like, um, <laughs> you know, like, uh, this time I want you to put as much money down as you can. And if you do, like, I'll tell you how much, you know, you're going to win because we're going to use the system, but, uh, we're going to, you know, I want you to take as much money as you can and, and put it down on this bet. And then we will explain to you how this works and how you can do it. And then there will be only, you know, until this thing comes out, there's only going to be two people in the world that knows how the system works. And she was like, oh, hell yeah. Like I've already won like five, you know, six other races. You know, this is the, the last race uh, or no five races and then there's this final sixth uh, race 
And she goes and she borrows like a thousand bucks from her dad and a bunch of money from a loan sh- uh, loan off, like kind of like the paycheck <laughs> cashing things. <laughs> Check, yeah, payday loans. Yeah, the payday loans or whatever. And so she had four grand to drop on this race. And then uh, he basically spills the beans. And he goes, and so um, but before he does, he says like, this is a homeopathic cure. And... <laughs> And he puts it down and he goes like, people don't realize that when, when they buy these things or any kind of alternative uh, healing things, and I want to tie this into the, uh, the high incident report, because that was the thing that happened on, are you, have you heard about this? It's, it's very, it's a very small kind of thing that's been happening. I heard, yeah, I've heard a little bit about it. I just, I haven't dug in too much into it. Yeah. There was a, so. there was a post on 4chan and it's on the archives. You can, you can d- find it on the archives. And um, what it says is it says, um, so I, I have it up right here. This is from Anonymous uh, and Anon. Um, uh, look, I feel bad for some of you on this website, so I'm going to let you in a little secret. If you live in Las Vegas or Henderson, stay inside tomorrow. <coughs> Excuse me. Don't go anywhere where there's a large, a large groups of people. Also, if you see three black vans parked next to each other, immediately leave the area. You're welcome. And this was posted on September 10th of this year. So last mm. month, and it said, you know, tomorrow. I think it said tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. So tomorrow, which would have been 9-11, uh, he predicted a terrorist attack in Vegas or Henderson. Henderson is a kind of a suburb of Las Vegas and, you know, warned of it. And there was a couple other posts that kind of kind of give a little bit more information, but not really. It, it even said go to Arizona if you can, which I imagine if, if they were talking about Arizona, they're probably talking about some sort of bomb, you know, that, may, you know, maybe even yeah, a dirty would, bomb. Yeah, I would think outside of some kind of blast radius, mm-hmm. perhaps. So there's nothing in there about a, a shooting. Uh, they were definitely wrong on the date if they were talking about a shooting by about three weeks. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, that, you know, there's a lot of wrong information about it. But let's just say that it said, you know, on, on October 1st, stay away from, from any, any large groups, especially uh, any concerts. Uh, on the south end of the strip, <laughs> you know, just just stay away. Even right. if we were to say that, uh, you know, that that's pretty. That would be pretty. You know, that's a pretty accurate prediction. This is not an accurate prediction at all. Um, but let's just give it the benefit of the doubt. How how much? How many of these kind of things do you see on 4chan or even the Alex Jones show where he's making predictions like there's a possible terrorist attack, <laughs> government staged terrorist attack that's happening next week. <laughs> you know, how many right. times have you heard those things? Uh, thousands. Yeah, especially if you're talking. Uh, maybe about not Alex literally, Jones. but yeah, you know, hundreds. Right. You know, yeah, very, Alex very jo- often. Yeah, Alex Jones predicts these government <laughs> false flag, you know, warnings on the on the daily, man. Multiple times a day. <laughs> like he's talking right. about, like he's you know, like every single day. Like you can. There was used to be a guy on YouTube. I forget what channel he was, or what the name of the channel was. He since kind of flickered off because it seems like a lot of work. Where he where he does is every single time he makes a prediction, you know he'll he'll mark it down and then he'll he'll go back that day and, and make a video. Said okay, so we had this video from this day and he's making this <laughs> prediction, uh, and this prediction, this prediction, and you know f- for this week he was gonna he predicted like twelve terrorist attacks, none of them happen. <laughs> like, and he actually <laughs> shows you the evidence of of where he's predicting these things. And uh, but we all remember the time where Alex Jones predicted nine eleven. We all remember the time that, you know, uh, Bill Cooper kind of hinted at something that sounded like 9-11 happening, but we forget about all the other times that they've made these predictions, that 4chan has always, you know, posted like these terror warnings um, that never come true, ever. But right. somehow we do remember the high incident report because it seems kind of close, like, oh, within a, within a month, you know, it, you know, time frame, it seemed to be somewhat accurate, a warning of a, of a terrorist attack. And we forget about all the other times wrong. We also we also tend to ignore the fact where there was slight in you know discrepancies. Like it seems like they were talking about a bomb. This was a shooting, right? Yeah, I mean, there's always the devil's in the details. I mean, if you if you throw out enough uh, doomsday or or you know <laughs> terrorist attack yeah. uh, type scenarios, eventually one of them's gonna you know stick you know so i I just (laughs) you know just playing the odds right i guess yeah if you you just keep saying it and eventually you're going to be right yeah if if you if you play the lottery and you're you're playing like a hundred quick picks a day every single day it's happening eventually you'll win (laughs) 
But it doesn't mean that you're clairvoyant or you yeah. have this insider information no. or the system's rigged or it's a false flag. It's, it just means that eventually you're going to happen to hit on these numbers, these randomly chosen numbers, randomly yeah. selected. Yeah, you're going to. Playing roulette, basically. Yeah. Eventually, if you, if you, if you keep putting money on red <laughs> or on, on 36 red, I think that's a red number. I don't know. Uh, but it, always always been on it. black, bro. Come on. <laughs> Did you listen to Wesley Snipes? Racist. <laughs> no, it's a movie, man. <laughs> I got. I love Wesley Snipes. Yeah. So, um, so before we get into the system, and, and I'm, I'm, I bet you're kind of maybe Pardon. starting to piece together what's happening here yet. No. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm feeling. I'm feeling the strings. Okay. Tightening. So, how he did the coin trick where he flipped ten coins in a row, ten, ten heads in a row, is that they spent nine hours filming this. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he did the whole day and then edited it to, you know edited it to uh you know ten, five seconds or you know 30 seconds right or whatever. So, so you got the the 30 seconds where he actually got them 10 in a row but you didn't see the three th- four five thousand times where he was trying to get this 10 times in a row and failed and there was you know there was even parts where they were showing like he was like i can't even see the ball anymore <laughs> but it took him nine hand, hours to get it hands cramping up yeah <laughs> So yeah, I mean, you know, like you said, you do that long enough, you're bound to you're bound to land on the right number. All right. So if you're not on 4chan a lot, if you don't listen to Alex Jones a lot, or if you're just not paying attention that closely or remembering all the other predictions that he did and you're only remembering the or like if you like in like I'm in nursing, uh we I'm always constantly being told it's a full moon tonight. Be careful. Every everything's going to go crazy. There's going to be bad things happening. Watch your patients carefully mm-hmm. and but we forget, we remember all the times that we go into work, we see, you know, like everything is going terribly wrong. We get a new patient who's constantly trying to crack their head open by standing up, even though they for, they're forgetting that, you know, they can't stand anymore. Uh, we, for, you know, we, we remember all those nights that, that that happened and we go outside and we see a big, bright full moon. But we forget about all the times that that happens where there isn't. Or there's, it's a new moon or right. Right. Or we go out and That's we it. see a full moon and nothing's happening at work. It's just a regular old day, you know. It's a, a association, not causation. Right. And it's also the same thing with homeopathic medicines and treatments and stuff is, or alternative medicines and stuff is that, you know, I know that I tried it and it worked and I know that all of these things are going to end up working. Well, you're also forgetting about all the people who, who tried these things and they didn't work. And those people aren't going on websites and saying, like, well, I tried homeopathic medicines and it doesn't work. Or my brother died of cancer. And especially people saying, like, I died of cancer because they're dead. You know, you don't, you don't <laughs> hear all work. those. Yeah. So you're only hearing from from their perspectives, their very limited perspectives, and not the entire thing. It's, a, it's a, a broad sample. Yeah, and this is the same thing with Kadisha. Kadisha wasn't the only person that they were contacting. What they yeah, ended that's up doing, what I was wondering. yeah, <laughs> what they ended up doing was they got like seven. Uh, how 000, many emails did they send? <laughs> seven thousand seven hundred and seventy six people. Wow. They divided them up into six groups, and they all told them, "Don't bet anything." Uh, you know, b- b- just watch this horse. And, you know, like one six had boss, the other six, you know, the other, the other groups of five had different horses. And when they, when, when it didn't happen, they just were all emailed saying, sorry, there's a glitch in the system. Sorry for wasting your time. And they kept doing that over and over and over <laughs> again. A glitch in the matrix, Jim. Yeah. And every time, <laughs> you know, every time there was like, they lost and, you know, they put a bet down or whatever they would, they, they said at the very end, they were going to reimburse them. But Kadisha right, right. just happened to be the one person that was in every single winning group. There had to be one person, right? Because if you have you know, groups of people and you're uh, separating them off into six groups, there's got to be one horse that wins every race. Sure. Eventually, she's gonna. She, there's going to be one person that climbs to the top. She just happened to be the one person. And he hands her the ticket, you know, that she spent four grand on to bet on this horse. <laughs> and by the way, she was the last person. There's no other person. They don't have a system to accurately determine what's going to win for one person. Just that guarantee that uh-huh. someone's going to end up, if you guess every horse in every race, you're guaranteed to win every single time. Right? Eventually. Right. <laughs> no, no, that, no. If I put 20 oh, yeah. bucks down on every horse, I'm going to win. But I'm also going to lose. <laughs> You're also going to lose, yeah. right? <laughs> and overall, that's the way this you know the way the odds work is that you'll lose if you keep doing that. So then you know she was like, "Oh fuck you!" <laughs> like I spent four <laughs> grand on a horse. I don't know if I'm going to win or not. Uh, and I'm not going to spoil what happens at the end. So uh, I have to go watch it. Yeah. 
it's really interesting what happens at the end, but um, that's basically the system. And this is kind of how this all ties into the, the high, the, the, you know, the high, uh, right. The, what is it called? I forget what it was called. High incident. High incident uh, project. High incident project, right? Yeah. So this is all how, how all this stuff works. And, you know, David Freeman um, talked about how his, like someone that his dad knew, because he's Milton Freeman's uh, son. Son. Yeah, it said that there was many ways to predict things, one of which is make a bunch of predictions and, and eventually you're going to hit on one that's correct. Um, and I think this is the case with a lot of kind of, <clears throat> like a lot of economists, I wouldn't say Peter Schiff, because Peter Schiff was very, making very specific claims and they all seemed to come true. But there was other people like, that, that weren't um, that weren't doing that, but seemed to predict an economic uh, c- catastrophe. But if you go through their history, They've been making these predictions <laughs> about everything <laughs> since the dawn of like since the dawn of their career, um, and so just be skeptical of that. Or you know, or politics. Dick Morris, not naming names. No. <laughs> <laughs> Where's he at now? Who? Anyway, <laughs> I don't even Dick, know who that is. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he, he was somebody who's like predicting uh, Obama was going to lose or something, and yeah. Oh, went down in flames. This was. Uh, uh, during the uh, the 2012 campaign, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I remember there's a lot of that stuff, and I, I was kind of getting swept up in it too because I thought because Obama was doing such a bad job, but at the same time, the one thing that Obama was going to lose on, if there was anything that was going to challenge him, it was going to be Obamacare. And of course, they chose the one person in the entire universe that ever did anything <laughs> like Obamacare in his that home did state. The exact, yeah, he was the, the architect level. of this project, like of of how this thing works. <laughs> So he couldn't, you know, he, yeah, it was, it was basically the model or, you know, the blueprint for, for uh, that. That's yeah. It was the self-destruct wah. button on, on, on Obama's back that he couldn't hit <laughs> of all the people. <laughs> he could hit it. <laughs> we'll get it. Yeah. We got that for you. Yeah. And, no, that I, um, I wish I would have, if I didn't know he, or going back to the, to the movie, I didn't know he was a uh, magician or, or mentalist. So, but and I wish I would have finished it all the way through because it, it makes it totally, you know, more sense now that she would not be the only one that they emailed her. <laughs> you know what I mean? And she was, I was so mad. Like, she was so mad. Oh, I bet, dude. It was such hell a brilliant no, troll. <laughs> hell hath no fury like a woman's scorn yeah. for gambling. Um, no, I, you know, as, that's the whole thing with the whole with the Vegas thing is it doesn't need any – conspiracy shit and people just keep trying to you know i don't know it's frustrating they just keep trying to reach for it yeah I mean, find, like, you know if find anything that confirms their bias you know yeah. instead of just kind of objectively looking at Look, what happened and i have no problem with people being skeptical of the police no problem with people being oh, skeptical of the media right. like right. And, if, and if things don't add up say something and i've even talked about how like it just doesn't seem something seems wrong here there's like a little bit of th- things wrong here when they're saying like he was the only person involved <clears throat> yeah and it was just, like well, it doesn't and, make sense but then it comes out then it but it's it was then like it you know then the investigation kind of pursued and now they're saying like we think there might be another person at play here uh in fact there was actually two people at play it turned out there was one that was an escort i guess he got an escort for the night uh for one of the nights and then mm-hmm. it turned out that there was another person that they're uh, like that they're investigating who may have been planning uh, planning on helping him escape after the shooting. But I guess he bailed yeah. and he was like, "Ah, fuck it, I'll do it." Ah, well, <laughs> yeah. Take, um, and one thing that was interesting though is uh, the security guard that got shot in the leg, mm-hmm. um, like ten minutes before he actually started firing into the crowd. It's, that's kind of interesting is that that guy, the security guard who was shot in the leg, from what I read anyway, and I haven't really de- delved too deeply into like the timeline here or, or any of that. Uh, so, you know, I'm not speaking as a as an expert on the all the events, but I did read that there was a security guard that was shot in the leg and he actually didn't report uh, or seek medical attention until after the shooting started, which I thought was kind of, I f- think that's kind of interesting. Like, was this guy... You know, a patsy or was he in on it? And you know, yeah. he took it. He took a shot to the leg and, and didn't say anything. I, you know, so there are some things that are kind of are definitely kind of weird about it. But yeah, I th- I think if it's valid, if it's if it's a valid uh, discrepancy or something is weird, then absolutely 
uh, that needs to be kind of oh, talked about. But if it, <laughs> if it's you know, I I think you kind of discredit if you immediately like glam onto you know mind control MK Ultra <laughs> stuff or you know you know what I'm saying what about or, Arthur, how you, Northwoods <laughs> right. <laughs> How did he get all the you know? How did he get all those weapons in the in the in, you know in the room? Well, it's you know it's fucking it's luggage. Bell hop and an elevator, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, it kind of discredits. It it kind of takes away from the valid things that are are, uh, yeah. are kind of discrepancies. The discrepancies about it. So, which 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 were, this whole thing kind of reminded me. Um, we did a we did. A, I don't. Uh, there's a lot of people who are kind of subscribed to the main feed of the Lulberts and not like some other stuff or YouTube. Um, there was one episode that we released. It was not a Lulberts because I just wanted to test because I got a new computer system and I wanted to test whether or not this Ooh. thing worked. Um, and so we, I did a test episode with uh, Jeremy H. Word, H-Bomb, I think I called him this one because I never can remember <laughs> how to pronounce his name, um, from the Seeds of Liberty. And we talked about all these kind of stupid conspiracy theories that were revolved around it. And you know, we we're saying, like, look, you know, like if you want to question these things, that, that's fine. But have some, like, questions that actually are thought-provoking. And, the, and, and as much as I give, like, shit to 9-11 truthers um, – it, it, every almost not all of them, but there's a lot of things that they say that makes you kind of go, that is kind of interesting. Let me look into that, and then you look into it, and you're like, oh, it's it's bullshit. But you know, at least there's something that are like something doesn't seem right on the face. This stuff on its face is just stupid. Like, how does a 64 year old man get to the 34th floor with all those suitcases? It's like he didn't take the stairs. Yeah, <laughs> it's like is the stairs the only way that you can travel in a hotel? Like that would suck. <laughs> that would really like a, suck. <laughs> that old? I've got a pretty robust rope and pulley system in that uh, <laughs> in that hotel there. You know, <laughs> it's like a team of <laughs> yeah, like a <laughs> it's a team of oxen in the lobby that just you know. <laughs> You know, lash them a few times and they just, you know, lift your shit right to the top, man. That's amazing. Yeah. And you can break all those guns down and put them in different bags. They don't have to be in like. A oh, bag absolutely. Says, These are guns for shooting people like. <laughs> yeah. And, you, you know, walking in with your like, you know, mall ninja or tactical <laughs> outfit, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, guys just dress like a normal guy carrying in, you know, luggage and. Uh, especially if he was spending the amount of money they said he did on rifles, I bet he had some pretty, uh, pretty light stuff. Like most ARs aren't very heavy in terms of you know what they are as a as for a rifle. So if you get some kind of you know get a lot of lighter uh, components to it, you know they a lot of them don't weigh more than like seven eight pounds. You know, yeah, so maybe some. It's not. Parts yeah, on he's that. not. Lu he wasn't lugging up like a um a Gatling gun or a, <laughs> or a <mini> you know, gun. <laughs> right. He didn't have a fifty. <laughs> a f and I'm not making light. You know, I'm not making light of right. of what he did. I'm just saying, like, you know, do do a little bit of research. Use some common sense, dude. You know, you don't have to. You know, he's not lugging up. You know, his he didn't lug up his gun safe <laughs> with the guns. You know, he broke them all. He broke them all down and brought them up incrementally. I'm sure. You know what I mean? No, he did it all in uh, like a span of three days, <laughs> right? Or so. one day, and then he just hung out for the next three days, recovering from bringing all those stuff up the stairs. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I needed the escort. I guess you know? <laughs> the escort wasn't there to to put out. There was. <laughs> She, she was she was loading mags. Yeah, you know? she, 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 he got himself a bodybuilder <laughs> escort. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> um, like I'm not gonna I'm have saying, sex with you. I just want you to carry the shit up the stairs for me. <laughs> right. I need you to escort my luggage up yeah. to the thirty second floor. And, 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 no, and but as someone it, who like I well, I'm sorry I'll I'll let you um, go as, on. So, as someone who uh, goes to the strip off uh, goes to the strip often just to find like a good place to walk around in air conditioning because if you walk from <sighs> oddly enough and Mandalay Bay what I used to do is I used to go to Mandalay Bay park there and then but now they charge for parking so I I just haven't been down there but what I would do is I would I would go to Mandalay Bay uh, park there and then. If you you can you can walk around and it's air conditioned and they in fact they keep it really cold, uh, especially during the summer, and you can walk from there all the way down to uh, Excalibur, 
completely uh-huh. indoors, completely air conditioned the entire way. Like they have like bridges that go across that are indoor, <laughs> all that stuff. And so what I would do is I would go there, walk up the stairs, you know, travel across, down the stairs, and you know, and but my always my problem was what I really wanted was the ability to go into the stairwell and then use the stairs for exercise. And every single place I checked, like they were like, no, those are only for fire. <laughs> like that's it. No matter right. who I asked. I think there was like, someone told me that the Plaza, they, they let, they let people in there cause they, you know, they know that some people want to exercise in it, but for the most part, they keep it locked down cause it's such a hazard. You know, unless someone pulls the fire alarm, those things are on lockdown. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you don't want people, uh, you know, sleeping back there, you know, <laughs> yeah. Or falling, whatever. <laughs> Or falling, yeah, falling down thirty stories. <laughs> stories. <laughs> that, that would be a feat. Like you would have to try because <laughs> you would have to like fall and then crawl down to the other stairs and then roll down those ones oh, okay. and then crawl down. To I got you. It's not I, like I don't one know staircase. All the way okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is an Aztec building. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> it's an obelisk. Just go straight up. Oh no, that's Maybe the, the MGM. Luxor. Sorry, I got yeah, yeah the Luxor. I got. <laughs> I got my casinos all mixed up. My bad. <laughs> yeah, maybe at the Luxor. Yeah. <laughs> but I tried those ones too. They're locked. And I think that's actually one staircase down. That'd be, that'd be fun <laughs> to watch yeah. someone fall and not to actually fall myself. Um, that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look out below. Yeah. So Alex Jones predicts all these things. People post this crap on 4chan all the time. And remember all the ones that were seem pretty close, but not, not the ones that, that don't. Uh, and it's always kind of good to keep that in mind every time you see someone say like, oh, someone just predicted that Bitcoin was going to go up you know, to $4,000. It's like, yeah, but there's been people who've been predicting that it would drop down to $0. There's people that are saying, it was, oh, it's only going to go up 100 bucks. Oh, it's going to stay about 800 bucks. Me. Uh, and you know, if it would have stayed at 800 bucks, everybody would have looked to me and said like, Oh, Jim knows everything about Bitcoin. No, <laughs> I just happened to be the one person who made a prediction out of billions that just, just happened, happened to, be, to right. be right. Right. And I didn't have any information on that. It was just, someone said it and it seemed plausible. And I was like, yeah, it's kind of, it always kind of seems to bounce around over, but it seems to be, that seems to be the median area. I was wrong. And it's still at, what is it? What is it? Right now, I didn't even check. Four, uh, four so, nine or something. It went back last to I saw a bit. Four nine, so it's up to almost at five. I thought I saw Zero Hedge tweet something about it. it said Bitcoin was over four four nine, but I could be. Yeah, it was a. Oh, it looked like it, yeah, it looked like it could have. Because right now it's at uh four seven five four, and ninety nine cents. Um, but it looked like there was a peak right above it just recently. So. Hmm. Anything's possible. <clears throat> yeah, you know, I mean, as far as like there were the, the grand conspiracy or false flags, I mean, I think there is a possibility that a lot of things, that some of these things do happen to, um, especially maybe this one, because there's a, a, a lack of motive. I mean, that's one thing that I've, I was kind of, I when it happened, I'm like, that's fucking horrible. I knew what was going to happen in terms of uh, calling for more gun control, which, of course, made me sick. Um, not surprised. But I was like, okay, well, let's wait and see if uh, what they find out about him in terms of uh, his history or his motivation. You know, supposedly they were saying he had left a note, um, which – and, and there's we, been we found no out real – note, by the way. The, it's, it's, it's a bummer. It's just basically calculation. He's, he's calculating where the best places to shoot. And he was fire, yeah, yeah, fire, yeah, firing boring. zones. Or, I mean, like it's interesting in terms of the investigation, like how detailed he was. But at the same time, it's oh, like, he was methodical as hell. Yeah, we wanted to know why, not how. Right. You know? <laughs> For most but, of um, us, yeah. I, I read there was one thing on uh, I think it was on Mark Stein's website. I don't know if you know who he is. No, nope. he's kind of a conservative guy from Canada. He's kind of interesting. He used to like. Um, he used to. I, I first heard of him because I used to listen to Rush Limbaugh, and he would like guest host for him. And I actually li- enjoyed listening to him more than Rush. <clears throat> He's actually a pretty funny guy. But uh, and he he posted something that said that everybody's looking for something that's kind of explicit from this guy, like in terms of his motive. But maybe it's more implicit. Like if you look at 
the number of weapons that he hauled up to that room. Like if it's if for for just one guy, you don't need the twenty seven odd rifles that he had up there. You know what I mean? I mean that's that's overkill. I mean, in terms of, I think you know what I mean. Yeah. You should be you sh- you should be able to reload a magazine for fairly quickly. But, uh, but at the same time, to, you got you but, also got um, the heating issue too. I think that was true. probably one of it. Like he just thought, like I'll just put yeah. one, one. And I don't know how many of them are fired. You know, maybe he, you know, but that that's kind of overkill. Um, and the fact that he targeted a uh, country. I, I I heard that he may have scoped some other uh, yeah that was venues. Confir- yeah, they said it was actually confirmed. He was looking at like Lollapalooza, Lollapalooza, yeah. and then some. There were some rapper chants, a hot I bed guess, of Trump a- supporters. Clearly, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> Trump Central. <laughs> I think he was. I think he made I think, something wrong with him, and he just wanted to to, to be in the right. history books. But you know, he's saying like maybe gun control was his implicit motive, not explicit. Like he didn't come out and say it, but he's stockpiling all the, you know all these weapons, bringing them up there with him. He's targeting um, a country music festival, which is, you know, it's a safe bet to say that most of those people are. Uh, probably conservative or Trump supporters and some fat, you know, or at least support gun rights. Uh, so yeah. it, it's kind of interesting. Maybe his actions were, he was letting that message speak for himself because he wanted more gun control. I don't know. Or maybe it's just completely insane. He was on some uh, anti-anxiety meds, I believe, which is a f- pretty common thread through most, um, you know, yeah, but there's like a these, lot so. of other people who also do who live their daily lives. The vast, 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 vast majority. Of oh, people absolutely, who are on yeah, these drugs absolutely. Very true. Are live normal, regular lives and don't do it, don't snap. And right, like, and also you also, you also have to remember that people that are prescribed these drugs, even medicated or not, are are the type of people who are going to end up doing something like that anyway. You know, like you're you're not going to get someone who's right. mentally fit and stable. You know, going to shoot up a bunch of six year olds at a school. You know, <laughs> those are no. the kind of people that are no, absolutely going to end not. up, yeah, you know, have other things that are <laughs> happening in their lives that people are like, yeah, you should probably seek help, bro. Yeah, you're right. Let's let's go to a doctor. Um, it, it, interestingly, his father was a bank robber, I guess. Yeah. You know, he was, his father was on the most wanted list for a few years and they finally caught him. So I don't know if the genetics had anything to do with that or not. Yeah, you know. it's, it's interesting, and, and his brother seems kind of crazy. <laughs> was it Eric? Yeah, he's, Ap- he, Apple never falls far from the tree. He, I think he's really. I, I think he's just liking the attention. I think that's what it really mm-hmm. boils down to. But uh, it's always kind of funny to do oh, that. You gave another interview this morning. Let's go check that. Out. <laughs> get your get your fifteen minutes. Yeah, you know. And everybody's like trying to dissect things, and he says like he said that he was in arms, and then interrupted himself, and he says, "No, I better not say anything. You know, I don't want to." Uh, and it's like, "Oh, he said he was in. He, I think he was going to say he was an arms runner for ISIS." And like, yeah. <laughs> you think? You, think. <laughs> you don't know. You think? <laughs> but just, leave, just trying to leave that trail of breadcrumbs. So yeah, keep coming back. I had made this tweet on. T- Twitter, a, tw- a tweet on Twitter, a twat. I, tw- I twatted on Twitter that. Twat. <laughs> Twitter twat. Like immediately after this happened, like no, not immediately, but when I got home or whatever. And I was just basically just bashing like these gun control people that are like, that are using this to exploit a tragedy. And my, my goal at the time was to kind of say, don't do that. It's fucking tasteless. At least wait for rigor mortis to set in. You don't need to do it. As you know, as as they're still right when they're just still saying like cooling, oh, we, yeah. As oh, because I remember, what was it at first? They said it was like two people dead. <laughs> I think well, that's what the first numbers that came out were. Like they were like we're estimating two people dead. <laughs> oh, wow, that was wrong. But uh, when as soon as that started coming out, people were like, "This is th- this is why we need gun control." And I think there was like some lady on. Um, but this is not related to gun control. But she was she was saying like <laughs> the Trump supporters deserve this, and she was like a lawyer for CBS, and like, CBS oh, immediately yeah. candor. <laughs> bye, bye, Felicia. Yeah. yeah. So she got I, she got her she got canned. Thank goodness. But it is it is pretty telling that that's the uh, mentality knee jerk or or default response. You know. 
Yeah, but I always thought that these things were bad. And I was thinking about it today and I was like, you know, g- gun sales are up. Um, we have we have the Second Amendment. Like as as much as they're, they're, they've been finding ways around it for gun control legislation, it's been it, you know in order for it to get a full scale Thanks, gun, ba- yeah, in order to get a full scale <laughs> gun ban going, you're going to have to amend the Constitution. That's like the only way you can get around it. Mm-hmm. That's not going to happen <laughs> to get all no. these states to to sign on that are in the you know the red states. That's not going to happen. So. I was thinking, like, it's probably a good thing that these people, that these gun control people do it, like, immediately after. Like, that even Hillary Clinton, mm. fucking soulless Hillary Clinton, was, like, immediately afterwards saying, like, <laughs> could you imagine if he had a silencer? Yeah. Uh, it would have been a little oh quieter. Like, do you not know how uh, these things work? <laughs> and and actually, from what I understand, uh, he probably would, not that you have to be accurate for what he was doing, but... Yeah. Normally, if you have a silencer, you lose some accuracy or or range, from what I understand. Yeah, um, there's a trade off. So I think it's actually more Could, accurate. I mean, well, is she you, doesn't. I mean, she is the expert about sniper fire. <laughs> I mean, you, <laughs> isn't she? I didn't even think did, about that. <laughs> didn't she? Didn't she land in? Uh, Bo- <laughs> we landed in Bosnia under sniper fire. So you know, maybe we should defer to uh, <laughs> to to the former first lady on this matter. I, <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! I completely forgot about that. I can't yeah. even keep track of all the scandals that are happening now. Information is coming out too fast. <laughs> but no, it's actually a good thing because now people look at them and go, "What is a bunch of sick fucks?" Like they're mm-hmm. clearly exploiting a tragedy for political gains. The only people that are that are on board with them doing that are people who are, you know, like, who who end up agreeing right. with them. Already agreed with them to begin with. Well, no and, one's swayed you know, by these things. N- never, never let a crisis go to waste. And there was that. Um, I, I don't like new country. You know, I'm a, I'm an old school country guy. Give me the outlaw country. Willie Nelson, Johnny Cash, you know Haggard, all those guys. Willie Nelson before uh, but, he tried to do R and B. Yeah, you know, classic. I, I made the mistake. Like, I found one at a, at a uh, it was a, it was a, because I, I collect vinyl and I was at the Goodwill look, looking for good vinyl. Which, by the way, when I, when I did that, I found like a first pressing of Johnny Cash, like a couple of Johnny Cash albums. First really? pressing. Nice. Perfect condition. That's, One that's crazy. Dollar. But I also found like some Willie Nelson. I was like, oh, I like Willie Nelson. I took it home and listened to it. Oh, it was terrible. It was. <laughs> no, they, <baby. laughs> Don't do R and B. Just go back to your outlaw country. Hey man, please. he 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 had to keep his weed habit going somehow. You know, <laughs> come on. He, the eighties were just a bad time for country artists. I guess. For yeah, <laughs> when you know the rhinestone cowboys. But, <coughs> oh uh, man. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh, uh, but there was one of the bands that was there. You know, supposedly he was like, I was a Second Amendment guy until this. Now, you know, I'm gun control all the way, and I'm just like, Eve, pussy. Yeah, well, I don't know. I I've never been in a situation where I was being fired upon. So I I, I don't know. I there's a good chance that you know being in, in a traumatic <laughs> event may may cause me to lead to myself to irrational thought. True. I, I you know I get that. Yeah. Fair enough. You know, and he's, there was also a that, guy there who was like, I was an agnostic when I went to that festival and I got shot. I think he got shot, or he was he almost got shot. And he saw people dying around him, and he survived. And he was like, "That's when I became God." And I was like, "Well, where's their God?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, if, like, yeah. I, I understand. Like, I get the whole like. I, I think the the argument is like, if there's God, why is there evil? I think that's a dumb argument. But well, if you're going to, if you can't make, you can't say that the reverse is true <laughs> either. You know, logically. Uh, norm- if if you if you interpret or base your basic beliefs off of what you experience you're generally going to have a bad time i think you you're going to have a bad time so you know my basic beliefs aren't based on what i experience or you know what i'm saying yeah if your principles change so readily you know and he made he like i said i you got i will cut him some slack you're right he went through a incredibly i can't imagine what those people went through. So yeah. I'm not going to say, well, if you come out changing your mind because of it, you're horrible. You know, I, I don't know, but I would like to think that, you know, down the line, maybe he'd re- readjust his beliefs when he, some time has passed. If he really ever held those, truly held those beliefs. 
Yeah. You know, just because somebody abuses their rights doesn't mean everybody else should lose theirs. Yeah. But, um, sucks, but there's, um, what was that Congress, that Congress critter that got shot by the Bernie bro? Oh, what was his name? Oh, God. Gifford? No, 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 no. That was the oh. Zeitgeister. <laughs> oh, that's right. I can't keep him straight, man. And that was a Democrat. And of course, oh, oh, you're talking about the uh, the baseball game. Yeah, yeah. It was a baseball game, and a birdie oh, bro went to, went there and shot up a bunch of Republicans. Right. And uh, I think well, didn't one die? I think he was critical for a while. I I don't remember hearing if he lived um. if he pulled through. I guess he must have pulled through because I didn't hear about him passing. I think that would have been kind of newsworthy. But then again, he's only a Republican, so you uh, know I, the, I the media didn't name. think fit to cover that. Let me see if there was any any because the the guy that he shot. Do, do, can I have a Wikipedia article on this, please? Jeez, James T. Hodgins. Ah, oh, here we go. The 2017 congressional baseball shooting. Oh, okay. So he didn't die. The guy Better. that died was the perpetrator. One death. Yeah, they they shot him. And Republicans are in a good shot. Okay, so Steve Caskill. Uh, Is there a pronunciation? Scalise. Castile? There we go. Scalise. Scalise. I yeah, love the pronunciation guides. Steve Scalise uh, came so out. So helpful. <clears throat> yeah. Even after this and then after the, the, the Las Vegas shooting went out and said, there's no reason to, to, to be to be anti <laughs> like, like, sure, I'm a shot, but what's, the, you know. Yeah. See, that, guy, that, have to do that guy's it? got principle. <laughs> right. But, you know they you know they'll 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 show them on C, uh, CNN for like a quick second but oh my goodness if one person gets shot you know Gabrielle Giffords they're still dragging her out and showing her stuff uh, now and it's like well what about Scalise you know like he he experienced right. almost an identical thing you know I have I have a theory like that they just keep Gabrielle Giffords like on ice like the Winter Soldier <laughs> and you know and <laughs> Civil, you know, the Marvel Universe, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> she's just like, you know, suspended animation until, uh, oh shit, this asshole shot up a bunch of people. Drag her out. <laughs> yeah. And the cryo freeze, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then, then her uh, idiot husband, you know, is, is there to, you know, coax her into, you know, back into parodying yeah. whatever. It's, oh my God. She, she thaws him and she's like, I is just, it time? I just, it is time. <laughs> I, I I cringe, man, because I I don't I feel bad that she got shot. Okay, I don't. I, as much as I d- detest uh, government and politicians, I don't. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's not. I don't advocate that. That's not. I don't ever want. You know what I mean? It's not um, time. To, it's not time to shoot the bastards yet. Correct. Yeah. Um, Sorry, Jeremy. But I I I almost. <laughs> It is, yeah. I, I almost feel. Wor- <laughs> oh, I love that guy. I hope, he gets, I hope he gets out of there soon, Jeremy. Man, yeah. pulling for you, brother. Um, I, I almost feel worse for her now because it's. Uh, I, 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 it just feels like she's like a stage prop at this point. You know, I mean, uh, I don't. I don't want to say it was better off if she had perished, but I, I just want to see her. Just go away, I guess. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, well, she go live your life. Go live your life to the to the fullest that you can. Well, stop she letting, didn't need. She stop didn't, letting these people, or you know, being a willing participant and dragging you out. And, yeah. and uh, ugh, just so. Well, horrible. she, she didn't. Yeah, she didn't need to die. She she lost her seat. Well, she she gave up her seat because I think she was she was hit in the head. There was a little bit. Right, of, right. A little bit of yeah. She she had some. Drain bramage. Drain bramage. Drain bramage. Yeah. <laughs> Good times. And, and not not that I wish harm on anybody. Like no, absolutely not. Well, I I wish they would they would they'd go away. I, just not that what just not in that in right. that fashion. <laughs> that's well, and that's what I'm saying. Like, why don't you know? Just go. Just just go, go home. live your life on a ranch somewhere. Do, go be with your kids. Just leave people the fuck alone. Yeah. Let them live their lives. You know what I mean? Like, why is that so hard? For for uh, some of these psychopaths to to relinquish that that power or that you know, it's for the cause. Sad. Man. It's for the it's, greater cause. It's, it's for the cause it's above very our sad. own. Yeah, <laughs> it's for the cause above our own. 
spooky, spooky stuff. Spooks. I'm happy to get spooks in the head. Man. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah, but I mean, um, no, I ho- I hope these people keep keep doing this because when they do do this, it 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 alienates people who would who would end up supporting them if they were just a little bit. What's what's the term more I'm looking for? If more, or, yeah, if they had a little bit more tact, you know, it it, it would persuade them. Uh, those people are going to be like, wow, those fucking political opportunists, yeah. how dare they? Uh, and or, and you, the gun people. Do you want more? Ch- do you want more Trump? This is how you get more Trump. Yeah, keep doing. You know what I mean? As as horrible as he is, this is how he got there. Is you you know for the most part you doing shit like this? Yeah, and and then the other part is all the gun nuts, and you know, good, not even just gun nuts, but you know, gun you know responsible gun owners and people who are really into guns and gun enthusiasts or whatever you want to call them. Those people freak out and they start buying more guns, and <laughs> so like when they're now they're talking about banning. Bump stocks. So what bump are people stocks. doing? Buying, Buying bump stocks. Bumps. Yeah, they're going crazy. And now like the prices so went from weird. like two hundred to four hundred bucks because you know like they can't make enough of them. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's that. so <laughs> it's so weird. It's almost like there's this thing called the market that you know works in its own way. Yeah, it's crazy. And if, almost and it, irrespective of what people in power want to do. Yeah, and if you get rid of the bump stocks, people are just going to find another way of doing it. I think, I think there's actually oh, a way. Sure. Yeah, there's actually a way that uh, people have been doing bef- before bump stocks, where they would like tie like a rubber band or something to like to the you know they would remove the trigger guard or whatever, and then they would or. What, I don't know how this works. I, I'm, I'm not a gun guy. This is not a how. This is not a how to. This is not a how to. God forbid. That's a whole, n- that's a whole other from. podcast. Yeah. No. But they tie a, they tie a band around it. Yeah, they tie a, bi- bound, uh, uh, a band around the, the front of the gun and the trigger, and it kind of does hmm. the same thing, which you don't need a bump stock for. And uh, I'm not, yeah, you know, I'm not. I'm not a fan of. I mean, just in general, not that I've ever really shot a full auto weapon, but. I'm just not a fan of full auto to begin with. You yeah. know, I, I think stick with a nice three round burst. I think that's like, you know what I mean? I think that's like the sweet middle ground there. Yeah. For, you know? for me, I, I don't know. I like long, <laughs> long, long range stuff. So, you know, if, if, if things ever came to blow, you know, if there's another American revolution, I'll probably end up being when, like a sniper <laughs> and getting PTSD worse than everybody the else. Fan. Yeah. <laughs> Except for the, <laughs> the free market drone operators, maybe they'll they'll have it worse than me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not like a vid- it's not like a video game. No, <laughs> after after all, is it? Yeah, or so I've been told. Yeah, know. but the silencer thing is the dumbest thing ever. It's and of course of all, it comes out Hillary Clinton, of course. Right. Of course, well, because that was the big. Uh, that was a big crisis to be seized upon was they they were thinking about um i guess deregulating or or making it easier to attain i don't even like the term silencer it's not it it's not an accurate term at all correct it's a it's, it's a suppressor not it actually um it's not silent at all right it's it still sounds pretty loud uh, it's like a jackhammer that's what people say but it, in uh even in some you know i don't know the actual countries, but in some Eastern or some, some countries in Europe, uh, suppressors are actually allowed because it's, uh, it actually helps with your hearing. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, so it's actually like a, a health thing. Like, they're, Hey, we don't want, you know, we know you're going to go out and shoot rifles and we don't want you to lose your hearing. So yeah, I know we're going to allow you to have this thing that makes it less, you know, damaging to your hearing. It's, and, it's crazy. Yeah. I heard in the UK, it's almost like it's, it's bad form. You know, it's it's bad manners not to use a suppressor because they're so loud. You know, a lot of a lot of a lot of guns are ra- loud, and they don't want you right. kind of damaging the hearing of not only yourself but people around you too. Um, and you know, yep. it, it's still loud. It's it's like if you can go on YouTube and f- and find videos of people using suppressors, and not one will you find one that sounds like James Bond or Die Hard or <laughs> like these movies yeah. are like pew 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 yeah. like. Pew. If it was yeah, the case, no. that'd be awesome, but it's not. <laughs> Meanwhile, reality. We all got to yeah, come to reality yeah. sometime. Hello. Um, <laughs> well, you know, yeah, well, it makes sense in England because you can't hear Big Brother on the telecast if you're, you know, pl- plugging away full, you know, full volume on a on an AR. Oh, wait, they can't have those there, can they? Where? 
the, at the in the UK. Oh yeah. Well, in the UK, yeah, they, you can. St- they're still. I'm sure, they could have like a. What do you, can they have? Like black powder <laughs> rifles? Or <laughs> I don't. Know. At this point, I don't know, man. I know that there's there's certain things they can do in order to get guns, or if they're going to go hunting or something like that. Or there's some right. things that allow some gun use, but for the most part, it's like they don't even let you have like kitchen certain kitchen knives. There's, they just want to ban. Oh yeah, you got to register your. Uh, you got to register your ginsu, bro. <laughs> <laughs> You got a, pardon me. You got a license for that? Can say there. All right. Horrible English accent. Sorry. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. This, I, I'm all for it. Just, just let let the gun nuts make an ass of themselves because all it does is just help. And you know, a full gun ban. The, the anti not, gun nuts. You mean? Yeah, the anti gun nuts. Why anti-gun not both? <laughs> Por qué no los dos? Um, See. Si. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about automatics. I never fired one. It seems it seems much more a hassle than it is. You know, it seems like it's more of a hassle because you know there's like an overheating problem if you're firing these things like crazy. Well, ah, and there's I'd, uh, I'd rather I'd rather take like single shots and just hit hit the target as I'm going. Save bullets. And bullets are fucking expensive. I didn't well, realize that's what I was how to say <laughs> <laughs> how much how much money do you want to spend in in a in a five second you know. <laughs> Oh shit! That was thirty bucks. Yeah, you, know? you have to be a really good professional gambler and make all kinds of fucking money in order to afford the shit that that guy was doing. Not even if, even if he had like three guns, it's still like all that ammunition that he fired. Mm-hmm. That's the pretty penny that he spent for that night. Oh, was, yeah. Depending on when you bought it and yeah, and where and you know if you buy in bulk, it's usually cheaper, obviously, but. You know, he wasn't hurting for cash. No. So it wasn't, it wasn't an obstacle for him. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know. It just seems seems like there's a lot of waste with fully auto. But, you know, yeah, if you're I, the government, you can afford it. Well, that's, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> you know, you have no no accountability there, you know, basically. Yeah. In terms of, in terms of finances. So, yeah. Unload it. So yeah, legalize the the fully semi-automatic AK, uh, a, 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 the AK you know fifteen, <laughs> <laughs> the AR fifteen. Yeah, machine AK forty machine assault rifle, uh, the AR fifty AR forty seven, yeah. which stands for assault rifle. <laughs> what the thing that goes? What the thing on the shoulder that goes, goes up? up yeah. <laughs> the, the barrel the shroud, senator. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what's a what's a barrel shroud? It's a thing on the shoulder that goes up. Like the fucking predator. I love it. Like every single time they oh. start talking about guns, they're just like, "This is great." In fact, there was a YouTube video, and I'll I'll post a link. I'll make a notes. So make you know. <laughs> let's see, gun video. There was a gun video where um, this guy was. He was like, "I'm going to show you how to turn your your fully auto uh, your full uh, your." <laughs> Semi-auto. Yeah, your your um your one shot per pulled into a fully semi-automatic <laughs> ghost gun, and he's like, "This is a ghost gun." First, what you're gonna do is you're gonna need to take out the clip and don't call it a magazine. It just pisses gun nuts off. <laughs> you know, and well he, done. He basically takes out the spring and just shows like how the gun can go back and forth freely, and he's like, "There, now it's a fully auto <laughs> pistol." Who knew it was so easy? And he did it with a straight face the whole entire time. Oh. <laughs> Just like I was Bravo. seriously Bravo. thinking Bravo, about going sir. on Twitter, oh, <laughs> like get, fake, making a fake Twitter thing and being like, "Look, they're figuring out how to make these guns fully out." Like, see if someone would fall for it. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm Forget sure bump stocks. Ban yeah. ban the springs. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Don't give me any ideas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, and you know now they're making. Um, I think with what's his, uh, Cody Wilson? It was his defense. Oh yeah, I heard he just came out with a new thing. Yeah, um, I don't. I, with three D printers, even if it's not directly related to Cody Wilson, who's a, a hero in my mind. Mm-hmm. Thank you for your service. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening, and even if you're not, um, yeah, even with like three D printers now, you you know you're able to print like not complete firearms but for the most part you can, even you um just even with metal now not just you know the the resin or plastic so the, the cat's out of the bag you know one way or another 
to get to, you know it'll never get, you know like you said even in terms of banning guns yeah you would need like a another amendment or what have you and even then you'd have to go <clears throat> confiscate door to door or i mean there are other ways to do it i guess yeah. in terms of of oh uh God. regulation but with with the 3d printing thing i think that's um amazing so oh my god <laughs> you know what? Uh, i'm sorry something just popped up on my thing on twitter or on facebook that well actually it happened a while ago when did this happen about an hour ago already oh wow by the time we started didn't even notice it it's old news uh, yeah no, <laughs> it's already old news 24 hour news cycle <laughs> yeah so, like, a while ago, uh, this is, like, a long, long time ago, not just an hour ago, even before an hour, uh, there was something that I ended up posting. I was like, I said, kill me now. And I was joking around because was, I was talking about how it was, I think it was when I was watching, no, I was watching the Emoji Movie. Yeah, I was watching the Emoji <laughs> Movie, and I was like, well, kill that, me that, now. that's a justified response to yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, kill me now. And, uh. And I don't know what happened. I think I think it, what really happened was it ended up on uh, Facebook's kind of algorithms. But it said that someone reported me, you know, that I was ha- that I was dealing with some some problems. <laughs> oh Jesus! I think I, I think I may have figured out who it was. <laughs> but I ended up. <laughs> I saw the the My Little Pony movie, and when I before I even got in the theater, I took a picture of me standing next to the little marquee that said, "You know, you're going to go see the I My Little that. Pony movie." And I said, "Like, what am I doing with my life?" <laughs> Facebook's one of my gonna friends. Send, <laughs> you're gonna get a you're gonna get a visit from the Facebook uh, quick response team and the QRT. <laughs> Do you require assistance? Yeah, one of my friends' mother, like she pretty much was like my second mother. Like we, I kind of grew up in the same neighborhood and everything. Nice. Just it was like, oh, if you're, I don't think you're doing very well. G- give me a call. Are you okay? <laughs> Intervention time. <laughs> I think I may have found out who the culprit was. There you go. Yeah, I, I, dude, I caught a, I caught a band somehow. I got, I got zucked. For oh, like three oh, or four days. What happened? Man. I don't know. They never said anything. Like they never gave me a reason. It was just like your account's been disabled, and I sent them, you know, a couple emails, and uh, I one day it was just back up. So I, I think. So I triggered some some concert, you know, cultural justice warrior who um, was upset about you know about me not saying nice things about a cop who was beating up on an autistic boy in a park here recently. So that's my guess. But you know, back in I don't know, back in black, man. All right. <laughs> black and yellow and black, or black and yeah, teal and black. Black and yellow. Back in black and yellow. Black and yellow. Black and blue, or black and turquoise. Teal. I don't. I don't even know. I don't even well, know anymore. Black and blue. Black and blue is all right. That's the yeah. uh, the transhumanists. Trans or <laughs> I was thinking the uh, egoist ball. Yeah, that's the teal. That's turquoise or teal. Right? Yeah. So, egoist ball's awesome. Yeah. By the way, <laughs> it's fantastic. Fantastic. Facebook. What was the one that I saw earlier? It had the the one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish, but instead it just says one fish, one fish, one fish, union of fish. <laughs> Is it my fish? <laughs> They're all my fish. <laughs> They're all my fish. Yeah. My property. Yeah. By the way, I'm loving so yeah. how. Oh yeah, I mention loving... your mention your Patreon thing. Or... <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Well, I think I already did. Oh, there was one other oh, okay. thing on the that I wanted to bring up. I keep forgetting the shit that I've been posting on there. We're doing an audio book for the for the ego in its own or the new translation, the unique in its property. Uh, we got the first chapter i guess section one chapter one and the introduction done i did the introduction jeremy read the the the, the first chapter you, you said you were gonna nice. re- record some chapters too and i'll edit them yeah man but it, yeah he already edited them because he's he's familiar with editing audiobooks already so because he did the Very ben stone cool. book or the not ben stone book because ben stone definitely didn't write that book never no, would do something sh- that terrible and you shouldn't read it definitely should not read it um and uh, the title escapes me, and Wink. I don't see the book. Oh, I put it put it away. Damn it! I didn't put it away. Shit! I was flipping through it. Sedition. Earlier. I was flipping through it, criticizing cri- fe- critically. I was critically examining how terrible it was. Of course. Uh, of two, course. What is it? Sedition, sabotage. Yes. A, a field guide uh, manual. 
I feel guy. Yeah, I feel. Oh man, I got it on my. It's the here. Scorpion book that he wrote. Damn it, it's really good. <laughs> But he, yeah, he did the audio. Sedition, the subversion, and sabotage. Field manual number one. A there three we go. Part solution to the state. Um, completely uh, fictional slash satire slash. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I know I know satire when I see it, and it's definitely satire. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a cult to dusty. Oh, it's satire. <laughs> oh. Okay then. <laughs> Ah, oh, fuck that guy. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so was there anything else? Was there anything else? Was there anything else? Um, hmm. Were you going to talk about how Max Turner is an alt writer now or something? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Because you said that you Alleg- bought the book. Allegedly. Yeah, okay. So you bought the new translation by Wolfie Landstriker. I did. And I was like, oh, you're an alt writer. You're giving money to the alt right now. <laughs> you were like, what? I- Okay, so we should talk about the, the little bit of the controversy. And uh, what is, Brian Sovereign did like a whole Patreon episode on that. Uh, if you're not a – like there's a lot of things I disagree with the guy on, but I, I seriously think that his Patreon-only stuff is far better than Sovereign Tech proper, way better. Um, I'm going to have to subscribe then. Yeah, and, have to be a Patreon and Sovereign Tech is great as it is. Patreon. Yeah. <clears throat> he, he did an episode where he was talking about the whole controversy behind the thing. So what ended up happening was uh, he wrote this new translation, and he, I guess he's been working on it for 12 years of the ego in its own, because the original translation has some very big problems with it, uh, and it was kind of commissioned by, was it Benjamin Tucker? Um, and so they're still kind of using the previous language. The guy, he wrote it, he 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 says that Wolfie claims, and you know there's, there's some merit to the claim that... He was uh, probably not the best person to translate it because he was like a, a, a devout Christian, and um, some of the some of the, the, the some of the jokes it seems like he didn't get because Sterner <clears throat> Sterner is I, I find my, I find a lot of myself in Sterner because he he does a lot of um, uh, parallel arguments because I I do the same thing like I do a lot of parallel kind of stuff he does a lot of satire and he also does a lot of. Uh, using people's arguments against itself. And I, I, I kind of do the same thing a lot. So I, I, I kind of see myself in Sterner a lot, but it doesn't translate very well in the first edition. And it seems as though he didn't pick up on a lot of that humor. Maybe he didn't understand uh, Hegel. Let's uh, clap I, it up for Christian autism. <laughs> 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 Normally it's libertarian autism, but yeah. Because yeah. he goes after Hegel a lot in the book. And he does it from that kind of from the attitude where it's kind of there's a lot of satire, there's a lot of sarcasm, uh, a lot of humor, uh, a lot of using its own arguments against itself. Um, and it seems as though he didn't pick up on a lot of that. And Wolfie does because Wolfie's much more familiar with with egoism than than Boyington was. Byington, S- Stephen Byington, I think was an original translator. Mm-hmm. So he wrote this new translation and he published it to a group called Underworld Amusements, which is run by Kevin Slaughter who um, now has his Twitter private, but uh, I was able to, to, to follow him before then. I don't, I don't know if there's, there's much merit to this claim, but uh, he, he did attend a, uh, a white nationalist rally uh, uh. a while, like in two, 2011 with uh, Richard Spencer. And uh, he, he hasn't really said much about Richard it since. Spencer. Yeah. Richard Spencer. Mm-hmm. Oh, where's my, where's my phone? <laughs> Oh, it's on my new wireless charger. I love that thing, man. I just got it today. I love it. Anyways. Um, Worms. <laughs> yeah. 10 out of 10 recommend. Oh, uh, that's a bummer. Yeah, anyways. Uh, so I don't, I don't know particularly if it's true. Like he, 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 he kind of denies that, that he's a white nationalist, but he said that he had some, that he, that when he went, he maybe, got some value out of it, but. Uh, maybe he was just bored that night. Yeah. You know, like, hey, I got nothing else to do. I'll go down to the, uh, you know. Alt right white nationalist. Uh, yeah, but because conference. he did, Wolfie, who has been a friend of him for like twenty odd years or whatever, and published a lot of his stuff through Under, Underworld Amusements, um, it was just was like, yeah, I can't, I can't do it, and I can't, I can't, I can't be your friend if, if you know, if you're going to be involved, even, even t- you know, remotely involved with this stuff. You know, I need to pack up my mm-hmm. stuff and go. And he took his book and said he's going to have pirate copies of the book printed out and. So that's why we're doing the audio book is because it's like, well, he's basically taking control of the book and Wolfie doesn't believe in copyright. So 
we're good. Uh, as long as we're not nice. yeah, explicitly using the artwork, which I, which I kind of don't want to put on feed, but whatever. <laughs> but we're not using the typeset or anything, so it'll be fine, I think. <laughs> I don't feel like devising another uh, cover yeah, for it. Yeah, no doubt. But anyways, nah, um, yeah, good. so that's why I was, <laughs> I was basically saying that. Uh, She's a Sterner meme. Yeah, I don't, I don't think Kevin Slaughter is <laughs> definitely like that. But it kind of sucks because uh, what it's also done is it pretty much put a, a hard break on the Union of Egoist podcast, which is really good. So there's only four episodes, but they're really good episodes. <laughs> and one is actually, oh. one is actually a, 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 a I biography. I hadn't known about that. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, um, I'll link it. But there's, a, um, there's, a, there's one where they do a, a full biography of Max Stirner. And the guy who's narrating it is the guy that does all the narration for the Mises Institute. Um, and I fucking... Oh, yeah. The one I do the, the impersonation of <laughs> all the uh, time. <laughs> and I can't remember I his can't name. I can't remember his name either. Shit. Um, oh, God. Okay, it's going to drive me nuts now. I have to do it. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean... Um, yeah, I'll have to check that podcast out. It sounds interesting. You said there's four episodes? Yeah. And they're really good. There there was there was the last one they did a they were doing a reading of a couple of essays that were mm-hmm. really good, especially the the very first one that they read where he was talking about the the pros of of hate. Mises, not Messix. <laughs> and I spelt Mises wrong. Damn it. No, that's Shh. not an accurate correction. Call, you call yourself <laughs> a libertarian. It's this keyboard. I'm still not used to it. I'm, Sven, you need to say 10 Hale Rothbards. Yeah. <laughs> it's a gaming keyboard, but like it's kind of clunky. Like I feels like I'm typing on like a Commodore 64, and it's hard to even like look at the keys because it's it, black it with like a fucking too. rainbow, and I can't stand <laughs> the color of this thing. Jesus. Eesh, why, <laughs> why can't I remember the name? Jeff Riggenbach. For, Jared, okay. Yeah, Jeff Riggenbach uh, reads it, so, you know, kind of interesting I could have looked it up. Oh, I was too yeah. lazy. <laughs> nice. Yeah, he's going to have to use yeah. my new keyboard. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> got to break that boy, that bad boy in. I'm I'm too busy breaking in the, the, the monitor that I bought. Uh, it's a 4K monitor. Oh, fuck, it's so beautiful. Oh. Once you see porn in 4K, it's it's like it's you can't go back. It's like you porn, you are completely worthless. Even if I pay extra, <laughs> all I get is 1080. It's so stupid. Whatever, man. Get on. <laughs> I I know you and Baron are uh, saving up for a sex bot. I listened to that last one of that. Episode, I'm not that sharing it. <laughs> no, I'm not sharing it. Yeah. <laughs> He's saving Something, it for yeah. his. I'm saving it for mine. He's probably not going to like mine anyways because it's going to have like, you know, neon purple hair <laughs> and tattoos all over it. <laughs> it's going to look like a suicide girl. Uh, anime fetish. No, I'm just kidding. No, yeah. that's. The no, big... no, I'm just. <laughs> all right, confirmed. <laughs> just... <laughs> Got the anime sex bot, Max Turner. All right, confirmed. Yeah. Uh, By the way, I'm loving how like. Everyone's turning on Lauren Southern right now. <laughs> just, I'm just uh, the internet's kind of turning on her. Ah, uh, finally. Um, she is fucking horrible. <laughs> I'm, I've never been a fan. She's no Laura Loomer, that's for sure. She's the worst. Right. <laughs> but, but <laughs> there's this picture that showed up, and I just had to share it on the, uh, on the Discord and Cap server. By the way, if you want in on it, let me know. I'll, I'll, I'll. I'll, I'll if if you ask me for it, I'll let you in, but I'm just not going to oh. share it publicly. So there's yeah, like yeah, yeah, we'll do that later. You know the expectation and reality meme. You know expectations, mm-hmm. and then the other side is reality. reality. So Lauren Southern posted one that was like trying to says trying to date like, and it's got the old um, Fifty Shades of Grey. You're like my desires are unconventional. <laughs> Show me, and they go into a room, and the the final picture is like a traditional family from the 19 was like it looks like 50s or 40s. <laughs> Like it's next Norman to Rockwell, yeah, almost. Maybe. And this is reality, and it shows a picture of like her butt, and she's wearing a diaper and a, a chastity belt over the diaper. <laughs> oh my god, that's kind of—I don't know if that's redundant or not. 
And I love this one too. There's, there's another one. You know, visual humor on, on the radio, I guess. Yeah, it always goes, always works. There's a picture of her. Yeah, there's a picture of her, and it says, like, in a tweet, it says, shut your ugly ass up with them pencil, th- pencil thin eyebrows. And then it shows her, like, mocking him, like, okay, fine, I'll, I'll, I'll make it, I'll make them thicker with pencil. And so she's penciling them in. And then it says, like, <laughs> Four days later, <laughs> so like she's she's got the thick eyebrows now, <laughs> permanently <laughs> like SpongeBob. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I can't decide. Who, I can't decide who's worse, her or Tammy Lauren or whatever. No, no, Lori, Lori, Lori. Yeah. She, oh no, no. You're talking about the other one. No, she's just stupid. She just. <laughs> She's just a per- like she is the epitome of the like oh I'm just cute and a conservative so everybody's gonna put a microphone so in listen front of my to face. me right yeah. yeah she has nothing of value like everything she says <laughs> is just regurgitating other people's stuff it's, anytime it's she horrible. where she's in a position where she needs to think of something on her own it just it just falls apart <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't see the other one I can't find the other one Speak- there was another no, one where of, she was speaking like, of sex bots no I'm just yeah. <laughs> There was another one where uh, Lauren Southern was. Um, she was saying like, "This is what men, you know, this is what men think they. Uh, this is what women think men want. This is what they actually want." And it shows like a thought in the in the, in the first picture, and then the other one is like a girl with you know a conservative dress on, and then it shows like her tw- like her collection of a collage of her pictures like as a thought, you know, wearing tight pants and showing her butt, and <laughs> it's like. <laughs> Pick one. Oh my god. Pick yeah. yeah. Can't have it both ways. Oh, I need to set this up for, for Steve Miller Miller. I guess there's one more thing I should plug. Get in touch with Steve Miller Miller by any way any ways necessary if you want an apron. He has the at best aprons in the oh, fucking yeah. universe. I need to also order one. I gotta put I gotta get one of those. Yeah, I'm gonna set up a, a store for him. Non aggress the cook. Yeah, no, it's, it says non aggress the cook and it's got the, the yellow anarchy sign. <laughs> I, I don't wear aprons, but I will I will rock that motherfucker yeah. when I get it. Yeah. Yeah, I can't find it. Oh, well, screw it. <laughs> but so, yeah, yeah, definitely get in touch. Was there anything else you want to plug? Oh, your your podcast? Yeah, my podcast, which hasn't pod faded, <laughs> technically. Oh, um, yeah. I, I, heard, just been, I heard why you haven't released an album. Sorry, man. That sucks. Yeah, it's just been some, some, I've been dealing with some family issues, uh, yeah. so... Those take precedence, and um, anyway, yeah, it'll, it'll be back, man. But uh, ZGY Zombies Government and you, um, it's like the Loberts, less cool, uh, less smart brother. I don't, <laughs> but, I don't know about all that. <laughs> no, nah, no, I'm just playing. But yeah, it's a little uh, bit more serious. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes. You talk about Star but, Wars a whole lot more. A lot of the only reason we, why yeah, we don't we, talk about Star Wars <laughs> as much is because of I've Matt. cornered that market. Well, no, the the uh, what is that? Resist the Empire. They're like a full on anyway, full on Star Wars podcast. But yeah. go on, sorry. Oh no, that was it. I was just saying that but he's getting a new microphone. He said it was he's gonna it's gonna take two weeks to get there. And I was like, two weeks? What were you were you getting the, the ten dollars pantry credit <laughs> or something on Amazon? Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't get Prime. That was great. <laughs> that new microphone on. video was I'll link that one too. Oh my god, dude. That I about died. <laughs> I about died watching. <laughs> yeah, I'll put it in there. Like this is literally Matt <laughs> next by next week. It's it's the best thing I've seen. So, but yeah, so, yeah. zombies government and you. Um, I'm gonna get you on there pretty soon. Yeah, let's so. do it as soon as possible. So, uh, yeah, Facebook, I still need Twitter, to go. I still need to go see that. Blade Runner. God damn it. Yeah, I really want to, man. I know it's not a big money maker, but. I, I dug the original, and uh, I, mean, I think the first one, one wasn't so. a big money maker either, wasn't it? No, I don't. I don't think it was, but like initially. But I think over time, maybe. Yeah, you know, a lot of great movies like, are like that. Like they they come they out. They released no like one seven versions it. of it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they, and they just released another one. <laughs> <laughs> I've been. I was watching that one today. Nice. <clears throat> yeah, but I need to see the new one because the the plan was yesterday because I had a. My Little Pony, and I talk about it in the in the, the podcast, which I'm going to link, uh, my review of My Little Pony movie. <laughs> Fuck that movie. Fuck that movie. God damn it. Sorry. You, lo- you love it. Secretly. No. God. Even if I was a brony, like, this would this would have been the final nail in the coffin. 
<laughs> really. Um, L- luckily, my kids are old enough; they didn't want to see it, so I dodged right. that bullet. Yeah, I'm not willing to subject myself to that torture if but, I don't have to. What about the Emoji Movie? The, clearly, the best film ever made. It's it's the unique in its property and movie form. <laughs> I'll, I'll watch it for that reason alone. <laughs> I'm not going to the movies. To see, I'm not going to the theater to see it though. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I was, I was going to, the, the plan was I had a $2 ticket to go see My Little Pony through that like a T-Mobile thing, uh, to T-Mobile Tuesdays. And I was like, ah, fuck it. It'll be worth, it'll be worth going to just so I can make a funny review. And then I'll just, I'll go see Blade Runner afterwards. And then by the time I got to that movie, I was like, fuck movies. Movies make me want to die, want to be dead. <laughs> fuck Don't, movies. Jim, yeah. do you need help? <laughs> Out uh, from the bag, fuck movies. Like that's oh my, my att- that was my attitude after that. I was like, Best I was so movie. angry. I was so angry. I didn't even want to see any other movies. <laughs> I was like, I'm done. I'm done with movies today. <laughs> it ruined. It ruined it for movies for yeah. a while, for a while. All right, man. Yeah. So, Go- zombies, government, zoo podcast, uh, Patreon slash Jim Jesus. Uh, anything else? Uh, watch watch Darren Brown's The System. It's great. I, I didn't spoil the complete ending. Some of it, but not all of it. Yeah, worms. Worms. Well, worms are toxic now. That's right. Every, <laughs> everything's toxic. Worms are toxic. Yeah, worms. <laughs> worms. <laughs>